Hey guys, welcome to Apologetics 101. My name is Grant, and today we're going to be talking about the Kalam cosmological argument and whether or not primer should be part of your daily makeup routine. You get it, because it's not cosmetological. It's anyway, I try. So now that we're through the bad joke segment, let's talk about cosmology. Uh, and again, that's not cosmetology, but cosmology is the study of the universe and its origins. So, um, but before we get started with the actual argument, I want to talk a little bit about, again, the word argument itself. Now, as we've said over and over again in these videos, arguments are simply organizational tools for your thoughts. You do not have to be interested in debating or arguing for this video to help you in some way or, or apply to you. So the Kalam cosmological argument is called such in honor of the Muslim scholars who first proposed it during the Dark Ages. It has since been developed further by many scholars, including William Lane Craig, who we've alluded to many times in this video series because like, he's just one of my favorites. Um, so today we're going to be talking through his version of the Kalam cosmological argument. So his version goes something like this. Premise one, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Premise two, the universe began to exist. Therefore, conclusion, the universe has a cause. So again, when we're talking about arguments and we give the premises, which hopefully draws to a conclusion, the premises are not givens. Those are the things that we debate, that we talk about. Those are the things that, that, that we get involved with and we, and we try and study out. So let's talk about the premises quickly. So premise one, is it true that whatever begins to exist has a cause? Well, there's quite a few reasons to believe that this is true, but the most obvious is that if things could simply pop into existence, you would think that we would see this happen often, at least, or or there would be any example of this happening, but we don't have any examples of whether it be um, anecdotal or scientific of things just simply popping into existence. No one claims that this happens. So neither from scientific nor an anecdotal perspective do we hear of this happening and no one believes it happens so i think we're pretty safe to assume and to and to move forward assuming that the first premise uh, from scientific evidence and personal experience is absolutely true so now the second premise the universe began to exist so the question is, how do we know this? And this is where things get interesting. Because as many of you know, you probably grew up in science class hearing about the Big Bang or the beginning of the universe. Now, it's important to understand that atheists did not always believe in this. In fact, prior to the sort of discovery of the beginning of the universe or the Big Bang, if you will, most atheists believed in what we call a static universe. It was sort of their way of getting around this idea that it had to be caused by anything because the idea was that it just always existed as it is. So how do we know now that the universe had a beginning? Well, among other things, the second law of thermodynamics tells us that the universe is actually running out of usable energy. This means that the universe must have had a beginning because of two things. One, if it had been around infinitely in the past, we would have definitely run out of energy by now, which is sort of a a brain teaser of a philosophical question, but it's definitely true. Uh, and then number two, there must have been a time of peak energy, and that's what we would call the beginning. Now, there's also the undeniable fact that the universe is actually expanding. Now, the people who have discovered things like the idea that the universe is expanding, um, they're smart on a totally different level, so I won't try to explain how, they how they've come to this conclusion because I do not understand it. But I think the most important thing is that nearly no one in the scientific community disagrees with the idea that the universe is expanding. But that means that at some point in the finite past, the universe was it sprang into existence or it sprang into being. Now, many scientists, again, have dubbed this the Big Bang. And I'm sure you've read something like, at one point, all of the mass of the universe was compacted into the space no bigger than the period on this page, right? Most science textbooks had something like that in them. And again, I have no idea how someone would figure that out, but it does tell us that the universe definitely must have had a beginning. So if everything that begins to exist has a cause, then the universe began to exist. The universe must then have a cause. So that's the argument. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're thinking like, wait, hold on. Wait a minute. 
So how do we get from there to God? Well, there's actually a second part of this argument. So because the universe could not cause itself, the cause must be beyond the universe's attributes. So the, the cause of the universe must be spaceless, timeless, immaterial, and incredibly powerful. And then there's also a, a further argument to be made that that being would also have to be a personal mind, logical and purposeful in what it's expressing. So this, in every respect, is what we would refer to as God. Now, again, it's important to note that this is not trying to prove the God of the Bible or to prove that Jesus is God or that Yahweh is God or that whoever Moses was talking to is God. This does none of that. All this gets us is that there is some sort of God out there or that it's most likely that there's some sort of God out there. Now, in the next video in this series, we're going to be talking about how we get to a specific God, specifically in our case, the God of the Bible. But for now, we are not there. And so if you've been objecting to this the whole time, or maybe you want to use this as sort of a, 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 an end-all, be-all for when you're arguing with your atheistic friends, this is not that. But it does get us to a God of some sort. But for now, like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.